Good afternoon. I want you to imagine this. You're walking down the street. You're in a hurry. You're on your way to work. You're in the city. You got your coffee in one hand. You got your cell phone in the other. You're texting. And you look up and you see a park ranger. You shake your head. You look again and it's a park ranger. Maybe. But he's wearing a pink period costume. And he's looking at a spoon. And he's walking backwards. Uh, okay. Now stay with me. <laughs> Am I becoming, or are we becoming, people who prefer to connect to things rather than people? We walk through a world of digital screens. Software tracks us so that companies sell us more. But what about my relationship to the physical world, to communities, to people, to things, to, to you? I created Art Not Places, AIOP, as an artist because I wanted to address this. AIOP presents visual and performance art in unexpected public spaces. In New York, for the last 10 years, <laughs> and more recently, Los Angeles, Greensboro, North Carolina. All right. <laughs> St. Petersburg, Russia. Sydney, Australia. And this weekend, right here in Indianapolis. <laughs> Ardenod Places wants you to experience wonder, to truly connect with people in your surroundings. I created Art in Our Places because I had concerns about trends in art and public space. So let's talk about art first. This idea that art is complicated or, or intimidating. When did this happen? Art is not for a very small few people in the know. A big part of founding Art in Our Places was I wanted to remind people that art can be accessible and life-changing, as it has been for me. A few years ago, a mother wrote to me from her, with her, she came to Art in Our Places with her family, and she wrote to me afterwards saying her six-year-old daughter wanted to create art inspired by an Art in Our Places project. Here's what happened. She found a box on the street. She took the box home, removed the artist's work, and put in her own drawings, and took that box and put on their street. This experience of connecting to the world is precious, but essential. Art in Our Places is a success. Every time anyone of any age sees the world in a new way. So now, public space. I know we all remember the events and how American life shifted after 9-11. We've had heated emotional debates after that day. But as an artist, no, really as a human being who understands how important art is to being human, I've always been concerned about the First Amendment. I remember the political conventions leading up to 2004 election. There were, maybe you remember, but there were, at both conventions, areas that were blocked off for the protesters. To this day, I'm still stunned at the phrase, free speech zone. I mean, I thought the whole country was a free speech zone. Yeah. 
The next year, Art in Our Places was born. I believe public space is for everyone. This summer, I participated in a residency called Ideas from Elsewhere with a drawing shed in East London. Their work, a lot like mine, is intergenerational, intercultural, works with diverse communities. In the gallery workspace in Lloyd Park that they have created, I found two polystyrene packing materials, and I made a mask. Then, I took a walk through the park, not with a mask. I took a walk through the park, and I discovered a pond, or what was left of it. It was overgrown, and there's no water in it, and park officials had put a fence around it and a sign that said, Danger Deep Water. <laughs> that pond was the public space that spoke to me. I was going to create a visual in that pond, in that waterless pond, a monument to neglect. So, I dressed in an all-white costume, put the mask on, climbed over the fence, and stood on a stool in the middle of the pond. <laughs> I stood where no one had stood for years. I wanted to interrupt an ordinary day in the park. The first people to notice me were two unruly boys who came over to the fence and they threw sticks and stones at me. <laughs> and they yelled, get out! <laughs> then they went and got park rangers who came, who came over, uh, talked to the curators, and they said, Ed, you're going to have to get out. I ignored them. I wasn't coming out, and I knew they weren't coming in. <laughs> so, <laughs> after a while, he laughed, and he walked away. The newly gathered crowd <laughs> felt angry, maybe because someone from the outside was standing inside clearly ignoring the sign. But as I stood there, after a while, the mood shifted from concern to curiosity. Then, out of nowhere, a little boy with a crystal clear voice yelled questions. Are you okay? <laughs> Do you need help? Well, I hadn't anticipated this. <laughs> so uh, I spontaneously started to uh, make hand gestures and, and uh, body movements. <laughs> and then that little boy asked this question. Is this art? By the way, at the entrance of the park is the William Morris Gallery, a beautiful Georgian home celebrating the life of William Morris, a major figure in the English arts and crafts movement. If you attended the gallery that day and you happened to walk by the pond, you'd have seen more than a white statue, you would have seen a community, a public, energizing and connecting in public space. Is this art? Thank you.